everybody, and welcome back. Now, in this session, we're going to look at God's plan and promises about a fourth key area of your life, how to be emotionally healthy. You know, in all my years of counseling people, I've learned two truths about life. One is that everybody has hidden emotional wounds. Everybody has wounds. You may be masking it, but you have at least one emotional scar in your past, and most likely you got a lot of them. The other thing I've learned is that emotional wounds take a whole lot longer to heal than physical ones. Physical wounds can heal in a matter of days, but it can take years and sometimes even decades to get over emotional wounds. So when we talk about emotional health, the good news is this. Jesus Christ wants to heal your hidden wounds. He wants you to be emotionally healthy. And God says this in Psalm 147. He heals the brokenhearted and he bandages their wounds. You say, well, how does he do that? I'd like to have my hidden wounds healed. I'd like to have those hurts and memories from the past taken care of. Well, today in this session, we're going to look at five steps that God says in his word that will take you through the process of healing the wounds of your emotions and improve your emotional health. Let's get right into it. The first step to emotional health is this. I must reveal my hurts. I must reveal my hurts. You'll never be emotionally healthy until you face the feelings straight on. Psalm 139 is very graphic about how we stuff our emotions. David said, I kept very quiet, but I became even more upset. I became very angry inside, and as I thought about it, my anger burned. David is saying that holding on to hurts is like carrying hot coals in your heart. You're the one who's going to get burned. It doesn't hurt the other person. Hidden wounds don't heal. They fester. And pushing a hurt aside doesn't get rid of it. It just makes it worse. Now, because we live in a sinful world, people abuse each other. We hurt each other. Hurt people hurt people. And I have no doubt that many of you watching this session today have been abused and misused in some fashion by somebody else. You know, it's amazing how people often respond to abuse in unhelpful ways. Some people try to respond to abuse just by forgetting it. Oh, I'll just put it out of sight. I'll put it out of mind. I'll hide it. But I've learned that when you swallow your hurt, your stomach keeps score. If you don't talk it out, you're going to take it out on yourself. Some people try to run from their pain. And there are many ways to try to escape. You can go get drunk. You can do drugs. You can go to bed with people you don't even know. You can bury yourself in your work. But escapism doesn't work because the problem stays. Some people try to ignore it and act like it never happened. And some people just try to cover it up, cover up their abuse. I don't know why, but for some reason, we often feel guilty. We're the ones who feel guilty when we feel abused by other people. We think it's our fault. And we don't, other, we don't want other people to know about it. So we push it down. And it's like a Coke bottle that you've shaken up. It's going to explode one of these days. One day, the top's going to blow off. None of these ways of escape work. But if you want to be emotionally healthy, you're going to have to be honest about your pain, honest about your fear, about your anger, about your resentment. You're going to be, have to be honest about your hurt and your bitterness over what people did to you. You're going to have to be honest about the way you felt when you were abandoned or abused or ridiculed. You've got to start by revealing your hurts. I always say revealing your feeling is the beginning of healing. You've got to be honest about it. They say, well, with who? You have to be honest with three different kinds of people. First, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to admit your hurt feelings, that you're ashamed, that you're miserable, that you're hurt, that you're angry, that you're holding on to unforgiveness. Second, you got to be honest to God. You've got to say, God, this is how I feel. And you just let it all spill out. You vent it. You let it all out. And you know what? God can handle that. God already knows how you feel because he saw the pain when it happened. He saw the hurt. And you know what? God hurt with you and God grieved with you. So it's not going to surprise God when you're honest with him about the pain and abuse in your life and the shame in your life. God already knows. God already cares. God already loves you. 
He's just waiting for you to be honest with him. It's for your benefit. You know, you, you, you just got to get it out and tell God. So you be honest to yourself. You be honest to God. And third, if you really want to get emotionally healthy, you've got to be honest with at least one other person you trust. There's something healing about revealing your feeling to one other person. You don't have to tell a bunch of people. You just tell somebody you trust. The Bible says it this way. When I kept things to myself, I felt weak, deep inside me. I moaned all day long. That's David talking in Psalm 32. And he's saying it's emotionally draining to push my feelings down. It's emotionally draining to keep silent. When you stuff it down, you're only hurting yourself. You need to start getting this out. You need to get it off your chest. You're not going to get well until you reveal your hurts. That's the first step. Now, the second step toward emotional health, once you get to honest to yourself, honest to God, honest to one other person, the second step to emotional health is I must release those who have hurt me. I must release those who've hurt me. You cannot be emotionally healthy as long as you hold on to harbor resentment for your own sake. You got to let it go. You got to let go of your right to get even. You say, well, it's my right. It is your right, but you got to let go of your right. You see, the fact is you only have a limited amount of emotional energy and you're going to spend it in some way. And if you waste it on resentment, you don't have it for anything else. One of the most difficult decisions you're going to have to make in life is this. Do I want to get well or do I want to get even? Because you can't have both. You don't have an emo enough emotional energy to do both. So let me tell you a little secret. Getting even will not take away your pain. Some of you have done that. You actually have been able to get back at the person who hurt you. And you know it didn't solve the problem. You still feel the pain. There's only one way to get rid of the hurt in your heart. It's through forgiveness. You say, but they don't deserve to be forgiven. I didn't say they deserved it. They probably don't. But you know what? You didn't deserve the forgiveness that God has given you. But he's forgiven you. The Bible says, it was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. God forgave you even though you didn't deserve it. And he now says, get rid of all bitterness and all rage and all anger and all brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind, the Bible says. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. That is a powerful passage. You're going to want to go back and study Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Now, let me be honest. I'm not saying forgive them because they deserve it. I'm saying forgive them for your own sake because you can't get on with your future as long as you're stuck in the past. You are emotionally unhealthy the longer you hold on to your hurt. You can't enjoy life if you're holding on to hurt. You've got to let it go. You got to give up your right to get even. Not because they deserve it, they don't, but because you want to get on with your life. Now, the reason why you hold on to resentment is because you subconsciously think, you know, if I forget the hurt, if I forget, then they're going to get away with it. You may think by holding on to the hurt that somehow you're hurting them. You're not, you're only hurting yourself. You're forgetting that God saw all that hurt that was done to you. He saw the abuse. He saw the injustice. He saw the prejudice. He saw the racism. He saw the rejection. And God says, Psalm 56, 8, you have kept a record of my tears. Did you know that? One day, God is going to settle the score because he is a God of justice. But as long as you keep trying to get even, you're just getting in God's way. So either you can spend the rest of your life trying to do it, trying to get even, or you can take God at his word and let him do it. The Bible says this, never repay back evil for evil, never avenge yourselves, leave that to God, circle that, leave that to God. For he has said that he will repay those who deserve it. Don't take the law into your own 
hands. That's Romans 12, 17 to 19. I love it in the Living Bible. You need to trust God to balance the books and settle the score. Stop trying to do God's work for him or you'll be un emotionally unhealthy the rest of your life. Now, why should I forgive those who've hurt me? Well, for one thing, because God has forgiven you. In the second place, you're going to need more forgiveness in the future. And in the third place, it's the only way you're going to get well. There is no other way. You have to release your right to get even. You reveal your hurt, and then you release your hurt. Now, here's the third habit you're going to have to practice the rest of your life if you're going to learn to be emotionally healthy. I have to replace old lies with God's truth. Reveal my hurt, release my hurt, replace old lies with God's truth. Now, in the last session, we talked about how your brain is little like a tape recorder. It's recorded every single experience in your life, everything you've done, every place you've been, everything people have said, both good and bad, right and wrong, true and false. Your brain is an amazing recorder. And some of you, maybe many of you, when you were kids, had adults or authority figures in your life who said things like, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're worthless, you're never going to amount to anything, I'm embarrassed to call you my child, you're uncoordinated, you're dumb, why can't you be smart like your sister, why can't you be like your brother, and on and on and on. And you know what? Your brain remembered those things. It could have been 30, 40, 50 years ago, and you're still acting on old lies. Those people lied to you. And you're still wondering why you do things that defeat you. You've got to replace the old, old lies with God's truth. The Bible says this. We looked at this verse in the last session. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, Romans 12, 2. How does God change us? How does he transform us? How does he make us emotionally free and emotionally healthy? By changing the way you think. If you want to change the way you feel, you got to change the way you think. If you want to change the way you feel about life, you got to change the way you think about life. How do you do that? Well, first you got to pray. And you pray, God, would you heal my memories? Would you heal those things that hurt, those open wounds in my heart? Would you heal my memories? Would you change the way I think about the abuses I've had in my life? You start with prayer. Second, and I've said this in every single session, you need to fill your mind with God's Word, the Bible. We've talked about this every time. Why? Because the more you fill your mind with this book, with Scripture, the more it will release, re erase all lies, it will replace, God's, replace them with God's truth. Let me just give you one truth you need to fill your mind with. The Bible says this, Jesus, who makes people holy, and all those who are made holy have the same Father. That is why God, why Jesus, isn't ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. I love that. Hebrews 2.11, God's Word translation. Did you hear what I just read? Jesus is not ashamed of you. You just need to let that truth settle in for a moment. Jesus is not ashamed of you. You know, I've read studies where psychologists have proven that the way you see yourself is largely determined by what you think the most important person in your life thinks about you. Let me say it again. The way you see yourself in life is largely determined by what you think the most important person in your life thinks about you. So, I want to suggest you make Jesus Christ the most important person in your life. Let him replace the old lies with his truth. He will tell you the truth 100% of the time, and the truth will set you free. And one of the truths of God's word is this. He is not ashamed of you. 
you want to change the way you feel about your life, you've got to change the way you think, you think about your life, you've got to replace those old lies with God's truth. Now here's the fourth habit for emotional health. If you want to be healed from your hidden wounds, you've got to refocus on the future. You've got to let it go, the past, and you've got to focus on the future. Get your attention off your past. Looking at the past is like trying to drive looking in the rearview mirror. You're going to crack up. Get your attention off the past and on to God's plan for your future. How do I do that? Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Job, there are three steps to refocusing on the future. And in Job chapter 11, the Bible says this. This is advice to Job, who'd just gone through a terrible suffering. Put your heart right, reach out to God, face the world again firm and courageous. Then all your troubles will fade from your memory like floods that are past and remembered no more. Job 11, 13 to 16. Now, what does it say? Well, first it says, put your heart right. What does that mean? You give up your right to get even. And you release those people who've hurt you. You forgive them whether they deserve it or not. Because it's the right thing to do. Because you need more forgiveness. And it's the only way you're going to get well. You put your heart right. You let it go. You release them. You give up your right to get even. Second, it says, reach out to God. You need to ask Jesus Christ to come into every area of your life, every room, every closet, every desk drawer, and you begin to let Jesus co cover every area of your life and let the healing begin in all of those hidden wounds. You need to ask him to start bringing good out of the evil that's happened to you. Let me go back to the question again. Do you really want to get well? If you do, you need to stop focusing on your hurt and start focusing on your healer, Jesus Christ. Then the third thing you need to do that the Bible says in Job is this. Face the world again firm and courageous. What does that mean? It means you don't withdraw. You don't pull yourself back into a shell. You don't build walls around you. You don't say, I'm never again going to let another man hurt me. That's dumb. You never build walls. You don't pull up the moat. Uh, the drawbridge over the moat, you start living. You stop saying, I'm a victim. And you start saying, I'm a victor in Jesus Christ. And you start looking ahead. Now, friends, if you will do these steps, notice what happens. The Bible, here's the promise after the premise. Then all your troubles will fade from your memory like floods that are past and remembered no more. Wouldn't you like that? W wouldn't you like to have your troubles fade away from your memory? Then take these steps. Now here's a very important principle. If you want to forget, you have to refocus. You can't forget the past by saying, I'm going to forget it. I'm going to forget it. I'm going to forget it. You're still thinking about it all the time you're saying, I'm going to forget it. You can't do it that way. You're thinking about it the whole time you're saying, I'm going to forget it. Forgetting doesn't work that way. You forget by refocusing on Jesus Christ and on his plan and his purpose for your future. And you become so consumed and so committed to your future, knowing that God will bring good out of the past, even the bad. You just don't have time to think about the past anymore. That's refocusing. Your past is past. It's not your future. That was then. This is now. You don't have to stay stuck in those negative emotions because you have the power of God through Jesus Christ. The old you is not the new you. Your past is not your future. And Jesus is not ashamed of you. You need to take these steps right now. A thousand years before you were born, God knew that you would be watching this video because he wants you to be emotionally released. Let's review the habits again. Reveal my hurt, number one. Release those who have offended me. Number three, replace those lies, old lies, with God's truth. And number four, refocus on my future. When you do that, you will be able to do what Proverbs 4.25 says. 
Look straight ahead with honest confidence. Don't hang your head in shame. See, God on the cross, when he sent his son to die, took care of not only your guilt, but your shame. Guilt is over what you do. Shame is over who you think you are. How do you know when you've been emotionally healed? You know you're emotionally healthy when you come to the fifth step, which is this. Number five, write this down. Reach out to others. You start helping other people. Now, if you're not there yet, you're not healthy yet because that's the fifth step of God's healing process. God wants to redeem your pain. He wants to turn around and use it for good. He wants to use your experiences to help other people. The Bible says this, one of my favorite passages, and I've just been through a major crisis of loss. God comforts us every time we have trouble. So that when others have trouble, we can comfort them with the same comfort that God gives us. You need to go read that passage, all of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. That's what ministry is all about. God meant for us to help each other. He can use your emotional pain. He can use it for the good of other people. So let's go back to the first question again. Do you want to be emotionally healthy? You can if you'll follow these steps I've talked about today and make them habits in your life. And when you fulfill the premises, God will fulfill the promises. The Bible says this, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He's not the same anymore. A new life has begun. Now many of you have already stepped across that line. You've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. But you haven't taken these steps. You haven't revealed your hurt. You haven't released those who've offended you. You haven't replaced old lies with new truths. So you know what? You're still living your old life even though God's given you the power to have a new life. You need to take hold of that life today by taking these steps of healing. And you can begin right now. These five steps will become habits and they will change the way you see yourself and they'll change the way you feel about life. Let's bow for prayer. With their heads bowed, you know God has spoken to you right now. And I want to pray for you, and then I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you that you can heal broken hearts and bitter memories and damaged self-esteem. Thank you that self-defeating lifestyles can be halted and new lives can be begun. Thank you that you turn nobodies into somebodies. And Jesus, I ask you right now to touch hearts that are hurting and minds that need healing, and emotions that need solve, solving, with your healing touch of love. And I ask you to save some people right now. Now you pray. Follow me in this prayer. Just say it in your mind. Jesus Christ, I thank you that you're not ashamed of me. And I realize that you see all and you feel all of the pain in my heart. And you know about the hurt and the resentment and the anger and the rage and the guilt and the shame and the fear and all the insecurities that I've had. I desperately need your healing for my hidden wounds, for my emotional scars. So starting today, I'm going to take these initial steps. But I can't even do these without having your power in my life. So Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my life and fill every area of my life. Help me to reveal my hurts, to admit them, to be honest about them, to myself, to you, and at least one other person. I know that revealing my feeling is the beginning of healing. Thank you for bringing me to a safe place in this small group where I can do this. Today, I, I want to begin the healing process by asking you, Jesus Christ, to come into my mind, my heart, my life. Help me to stop focusing on getting even and instead start focusing on getting well. Help me to release those who've hurt me. Help me to replace the lies in my mind with your truth. Help me to refocus on the future and your plan and purpose. I ask you to heal me 
so that you can use me to heal others. I want to take that fifth step and use the pain in my life to help other people. And I commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I know in this discussion time, it's going to be more of a tender time because we've covered some real deep things today. And I want to ask you to be emotionally sensitive and tender to each other. Don't try to fix each other. Don't try to, to, uh, to change each other. Just be there and listen. And when you listen, you heal people with your ears. Enjoy your discussion time, and I'll see you in our next session.